News of the Times History News Stories Historical Cases of Incest A touchy subject, but one that has come up in historical news stories. In this episode, we have included two cases from the 1800s. You can hear from the tenor of the writing, the approach to the stories has overtones of an 18th century approach to the stories. We start this episode with the notorious case of the Braids, brother and sister, and the murder of their child. Although the case went to court, it was a closed court, giving the very touchy nature of the trial. We have searched for the build-up of the crimes, but have not been successful in retrieving the news reports. We suspect that this was due to the nature of the trial. For this reason, the majority of the story is told through the broadsides, with overtones of a warning to its readers rather than the most neutral newspaper reports we usually prefer to go to. Meaning of brother and sister German. This is an archaic term that refers to the siblings as being full brother and sister rather than half brother and sister. The siblings were born from the same mother and father. From the broadsides, 17th of February, 1834, trial and sentence. A full and particular account of the trial and sentence of Thomas Braid and Mary Braid or Morrison, brother and sister, German, who were tried yesterday, Monday, before the High Court of Judiciary for incest and murder, and who are Mary Braid or Morrison to be executed on Monday the 17th of February and her body to be buried within the precincts of the jail and Thomas Braid to be banished for life. On Monday 27th of January 1834 came on the trial of Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, or Morrison, brother and sister German, accused of incest and murder, both of which crimes are forbidden by the laws of God and man. In the 18th chapter of Leviticus, incest is particularly forbidden under the severest denunciations and in and an act passed in the first parliament of james the sixth it is their statute to be punishable to the death the sixth commandment says thou shall not kill and in another part of holy writ it is stated whoever sheddeth a man's blood by man his blood shall be shed Notwithstanding which, the libel charges the said Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, or Morrison both and each, or one of the others of them, guilty of the said crimes of incest and murder, or of one of the other of them, actor or actors, or art and part. Insofar as during the years 1832 and 1833, or part thereof, and at various places within the county of Edinburgh, you, the said Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, or Morrison, being brother and sister German, as aforesaid, did wickedly and unlawfully carry on an incestuous intercourse with each other. Charge 1. In particular, during the months of May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December, of 1832 and January and February 1833, or part thereof, within the house at Stenhouse, in the parish of Liberton and county of Edinburgh, then occurred by Janet Begby or Braid, your mother, or elsewhere to the prosecution unknown in the said parish of Liberton or near vicinity, you the said Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, or Morrison, being brother and sister German, as aforesaid, did wickedly and unlawfully carry on an incestuous intercourse together, 
and did on various occasions during the said period abuse your bodies with each other. And in consequence of the said incestuous intercourse, you, the said Mary Braid or Morrison, became pregnant and were therefore delivered of a living female child on or about the 10th of day of April, 1833, within the house in the Canongate in or near Edinburgh, then occupied by Charity Anderson or Hardy, widow, then residing there, and now or lately residing in Hill Place in or near Edinburgh. Charge 2. Likewise, during the months of March, April and May 1833, or part thereof, within the house in Canongate aforesaid, then occupied as aforesaid by the said Charity Anderson or Hardy. You, the said Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, alias Morrison, being brother and sister German, as aforesaid, did wickedly and unlawfully carry on an incestuous intercourse with each other, and did cohabitate together as husband and wife, and on occasions during the said period were there in naked bed together, and did abuse your bodies with each other. Charge 3. Likewise, during the months of June, July and August 1833, or part thereof, within the house in the Canongate aforesaid, then occupied by you, the said Thomas Braid, and Mary Braid, or Morrison, or by one or other of you. You, the said Thomas Braid, and Mary Braid, or Morrison, being brother and sister German, as aforesaid, did wickedly and unlawfully carry on an incestuous intercourse with each other, and on various occasions during the said period were there in naked bed together, and did abuse your bodies with each other. Charge 4. Moreover, you, the said Mary Braid or Morrison, having, on or about the 10th day of April 1833, been delivered of a living female child, of which you had become pregnant, in consequence, as aforesaid, of the incestuous intercourse above libelled, or in consequence of other carnal intercourse to the prosecutor unknown. You, the said Thomas Braid and Mary Braid or Morrison, did both each on one or other of you upon the 16th day of August 1833 or upon one or other of the days of that month or of July immediately preceding or of September immediately following at or near to a part of the Edinburgh and Glasgow Union Canal near the first stone bridge on the said canal as reckoned from Port Hopetown in or near Edinburgh, or at or near to some other part of the said canal, betwixt Port Hopetown aforesaid and the second stone bridge on the said canal, reckoned as aforesaid or elsewhere to the prosecutor unknown in the county of Edinburgh, wickedly and feloniously put to death and murder the said child, by throwing it into the said canal, having a rope fastened round its neck and a stone or some other heavy substance attached to the said rope for the purpose of sinking its body in the water and by leaving it there sunk accordingly or by some other means to the prosecutor unknown and the dead body of the said child which was murdered by you, the said Thomas Braid, and Mary Braid or Morrison, or by one or other of you, was therefore on or about the 22nd day of August 1833, found floating in the said canal near the first stone bridge aforesaid. The Witnesses In support of these heinous charges, 36 witnesses were abducted, but the trial having proceeded with closed doors, we cannot, of course, state any particulars of the evidence at all. Some exculpatory witnesses were then examined when the jury were addressed for the prosecution by the Solicitor General and fourth prisoners by Mr Monteith at considerable length. 
The presiding judge, Lord Meadowbank, summoned up the evidence and said the jury found Mary Braid or Morrison guilty, but the libel not proven against Thomas Braid, the former Mary Braid, was then sentenced to be executed on the morning of the 17th of February next and her body to be buried within the precincts of the jail. The latter, Thomas Braid, to be banished beyond the seas for the period of his natural life. The trial created a great deal of interest and lasted nearly 18 hours. From the Inverness Courier, 5th of February, 1834. The High Court of Justicery. The court were on Monday occupied from 10 in the morning until half past three Thursday morning with the trial of Thomas Braid and Mary Braid, stroke Morrison, accused of the crimes of incest and murder, the victim, the child, being the fruit of their unnatural crime. The investigation was, of course, conducted with closed doors. The jury retired to consider their verdict a little past two o'clock and returned at ten minutes past three, finding, by a plurality of voices, both parties guilty of the incest libelled, and on the second charge of murder they found, with the exception one dissenting voice, the female prisoner Mary Braid guilty, and the indictment against the remaining prisoner Thomas Braid not proven. Mr Shaw Stewart, the part of the court, intimated that he restricted the libel in so far regarding the prisoner convicted of incest, Thomas Braid, after a most impressive address from Lord Meadowbank, during which the female prisoner fainted and had to be removed from the bar, was sentenced to transportation for life. During the whole of the address, the prisoner, Thomas Braid, behaved in the most indifferent manner, and at the interval when the female prisoner was removed, he said, My innocence will protect me, I hope. In this bloody country, I have got no justice. The female prisoner, Mary Braid, was then brought and seemed in such a state of dejection and debility that the court intimated that she might keep her seat while the sentence was pronouncing. His lordship then read the sentence of the court, ordaining the prisoner to be executed in the usual form on Monday, the 17th of February next. The female prisoner seemed from 40 to 45 years of age, but the male prisoner appeared several years younger. From the morning advertised the 31st of January, 1834. Sentencing of Mary Braid. Lord Meadowbank addressed her, Mary Braid, as follows. You have been convicted of the two dreadful crimes of incest and murder, of murder most foul and most unparalleled committed upon the issues of your own body. I wish not to aggravate the situation in which you are placed. Every feeling of your heart, I am sure, must tell you how low you are sunk and if you had witnessed what we have now witnessed, you would have felt how miserably you have been deluded by the paramour in your guilt. If he felt not for himself, he should have felt for you, at least who are thus, probably though his means originally exercised, to be hurried to an ignominious death, but feeling he has none, and let me press upon you, therefore, if your mind is still lingering in the ties of affection in that quarter, that you break the tie at once, and turn yourself to the cultivation of that religion in which alone you can find consolation, and through which alone you can hope for mercy. Let me press and urge you to attend to those devout persons who will visit and give you all the benefit of their instructions. They will show you the way of devotion, and I most sincerely trust and pray their efforts may not be unavailing. From the infamous case of the Braves, brother and sister, 
we jump to 1836 and the case that rocked the parish with the minister of the parish loved and respected having been found to have have been carrying an illicit affair with his sister. From the Inverness Courier, December 1836. Shameful case of incest. A full, true and particular account of that most extraordinary, shameful and disgraceful case of incest between the minister of the parish of Logie in Rothshire and his own sister. She was seized with the pains of childbirth while playing at her piano on the 5th of November last, her brother being at the time assisting at the dispensation of the sacrament in the neighbouring parish. Together with an account of his confession of the unnatural crime and his resignation of his holy office. The parish church of Logie in the county of Ross has again become vacant and under circumstances of the most painful and awful description, as the case will soon come publicly before the presbytery and as a hundred idle reports, some of them implicating innocent persons in a neighbouring county, are afloat on the subject, we shall briefly recapitulate the facts. On the 5th of November last, Miss K, sister of the minister of the parish, who resided in the manse and superintended the domestic establishment, was suddenly taken ill while playing on the piano forte. Her brother was absent, assisting to dispense the sacrament in another place, but aid was immediately procured. The young lady's illness continued to increase, and at length, to the grief and astonishment of those present, who never once suspected her condition, she was delivered of a child. She had made no preparation for the event, and she refused to give any information as to the paternity of the infant. About ten days passed over, when the minister disappeared, leaving his church and flock. No person knew whether he had gone, but in a short time the moderator of the presbytery received a letter from him, written from Aberdeen, acknowledging incestuous connection and resigning his living. The effect of such intelligence on the virtuous and religious inhabitants of that district we shall not attempt to describe. The unfortunate female who has participated in the unnatural guilt of her brother was pursued to the west coast whither she had fled, was apprehended and brought last week to Dingwall. From the latter place she was conveyed in a chaise accompanied by an officer and a female attendant to Tain, but while the man left the vehicle for a few moments to wait upon the sheriff with an account of her apprehension or to receive fresh instructions, the offender and her attendant alighted from the chase and escaped. We know not whether they have been closely pursued, but we sincerely trust that they will elude detection and thus prevent a trial which would be fraught with so much sorrow, shame and disgrace. Thank you for listening to News at the Times and this episode regarding reported cases of incest that went to trial. We hope you enjoyed the show. To our subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support, which helps us to continue to create content. If you've not subscribed, we'd really appreciate it if you did. We're aiming for 1,000 subscribers. Every subscription helps. Thank you again for listening and watching. This has been News of the Times, and I am Robin Coles.